What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, we need to have a little bit of a look at library access and the pemp seed, and ask the question, is this a problem? You see, I've been commentating over the last kind of week or two, all of the rounds, or pretty much all the rounds, from the Illinois Vault Tour. And that culminated yesterday, when I showed you the final, and let's just say the final was completely dominated by a library access and a pemp seed. It was a best of three game, and it was adaptive, which means you swap decks between rounds, and it was won all three games by the same library access and the pemp seed deck. What was very interesting is that the player who didn't bring that deck but won with it game two, because you swap after game one, didn't bid any chains. That's how you decide who gets it for the third game. You bid chains. And then he didn't get the deck, and then he lost to it in the final. And that was it. That was the end of the game. That was the end of the Volt Tour. So the question is, is it a problem? And I feel quite confident that on its own, library access is not a problem. Library access says that for the remainder of the turn, every time you play a card, you draw a card. Now there are a couple of cards within the Logo's house which make this particularly good. You've got Wild Wormhole. When you play it, you draw a card. And then it allows you to play the top card of your deck regardless of which house it's from. And then of course you play a Nazi, you draw another card. The other one is Phase Shift, and you play it, you draw a card. But now you're allowed to play a non-Logos card at some point during your turn. It does not have to be immediately. And when you do, you draw another card. And I've mentioned in a bunch of videos, I've got a deck with Library Access and Free Phase Shift. And it's really good for drawing a whole bunch of cards. The thing is, your deck is 36 cards, so there's a decent chance that even if you're drawing 3, 4, 5 cards, you're just going to run out of steam after a little while. You won't have any more Logos cards to draw. Now, the ideal situation here is that you play Library Access. You run out of your deck. So you shuffle your discard pile. That becomes your deck. Then you draw Library Access and play it. And now you're drawing two cards every time you draw a card. And there'll be plenty of times that happens. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen often enough. Which is where the Pemp Seed comes in. Now, the Pemp Seed is an untamed card. But what is really important here is that it has an Omni ability. Which means that it can be used during your turn, regardless of which house you have elected to be your active house for that particular turn. And it says you sacrifice the Pemp Seed, and you return a card from your discard pile to your hand. So the combo here is extremely simple. You play Library Access when you've got the Pemp Seed down. You then use the ability on the Pemp Seed to sacrifice it, grab Library Access back, immediately play it, and then from the off, from the very beginning, from the moment you start this combo, you are drawing two cards every time you play something. And then hopefully you run out of your deck and draw Library Access and play it, and now you're drawing three cards. And honestly, the best way I can say it is this. It makes a gigantic gigantic difference whether you're immediately drawing two or one from library access. Drawing one card every time you play a card will sometimes allow you to start cycling your deck. Drawing two cards every time you play library access will often lead to you cycling your deck. So library access I don't think is a big problem, the pent seed could be. Now there are several different ways this can go. Probably the most egregious example of this is where you've got either Chota Hasri or Key Charge. Doesn't have to be those, there are others you can use. You've got Key Abduction in Mars, for instance. But Chota Hazri and Key Charge are the better ones. Plus, they combo really nicely because Nepenthe Seed is untamed. So you're more likely to have them in a deck with Nepenthe Seed. And these allow you to forge keys in the middle of your turn. Now, Chota Hazri, when you play it, you lose one ember. And if you do, you may forge a key at current cost. So essentially, you pay seven to forge a key, and unless there's something else increasing the cost of forging your key. Like if your opponent used a Lash of Broken Dreams on the previous turn. The thing is, Chota Hazri is a one-time deal. You play it, you forge a key, brilliant. But then, you can't do it again. You've got to kind of get Chota Hazri off the field. You've got to use one of your own cards to either pick it up, using something like a Nature's Call, or to destroy it yourself so that it ends up in your discard pile and you can cycle it round. Whereas if you're rocking and rolling with key charge, it's just an action card, so it goes in your discard, you can cycle back round and get it again. 
This hasn't seen any success in any of the Volt tools. We've not seen this crushing in the Volt tools. Having said that, we've only had three and one of them was sealed. So the chances of it turning up in a sealed tournament are very, 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 very slim. But this is the most egregious example of it. And I did a video about this. I'll pop a link in the description. Because the theory here is you can just forge extra keys. And you can forge two or three keys during your turn and win. Please do remember that you'll need phase shift here. You need phase shift in order to play key charge. But that's not what happened with the winning deck from the Illinois Vault Tour. They had a control deck. Now... If you go back to the commentary of that video, I mentioned how it didn't have stuff like key charge. But as I commentated, as I watched that game, as I explained it, it got more and more obvious it was a controlling deck. And the weird thing is, it didn't have any cards that on the face of it looked over the top ridiculous. So one of the things it had was two copies of Twin Bolt Emission. The thing about Twin Bolt Emission is it does two damage to two different creatures. Incidentally, that's any creature, so this is the kind of thing you could use to take out Chota Hazri. And you just use that to clear your opponent's board. It came around over and over and over and over again, and then you just cleared your opponent's board. The other thing it had, like Twin Bolt Emission, a bunch of cars that generated Ember. Because essentially, there are a few things you're looking for when you're doing this Library Access and the Pemp Seed combo. The ideal situation is, I am going to forge until I've got three keys, but that's going to be quite rare. The secondary concern, I am going to get a whole bunch of Ember. Because let's say you've got, I don't know, six Logos cards that give you Ember bonuses, and you've got two Phase Shift. And you use each Phase Shift to play a card from a different house that gives you an Ember. That means you're basically getting 8 Ember every time you cycle through your deck. After a while, you are going to end up with a huge amount of Ember. And we saw this when Dan was using the deck in Game 2. At one point, he was literally sitting there with like 20 or 30 Ember. So one thing you can do is just build up Ember and build and build and build and build and build and build and build. And build. But the other thing, and this was very, very important, that George had in his deck was Control the Weak. Control the weak was very important for his chance of winning. And here's the reason. This combo has some very clear counters. Some extremely clear counters. So let's say, for argument's sake, your opponent is doing that thing where they just want to build up a huge amount of ember and then sit there and win the game quite quickly. Well, too much to protect would be a great counter for that. Because too much to protect steals all but six of your opponent's ember. So now, every ember they gain above six goes to you. And then, as long as you can get rid of one of their ember on the following turn, they don't actually forge. And it helps you a lot more than it helps them. Effervescent Principle can help. The problem with Effervescent Principle is it takes away half their ember. So there is every possibility that your opponent just get so much ember that losing half doesn't really worry them. The other thing that won't really work here is bait and switch. Because bait and switch basically allows you to keep stealing until you've got the same or one more ember than your opponent. But if they've got like 50 ember, then you end up with 25 and they end up with 25 and they're still forging free keys. The other one that works nicely here is Doorstep to Heaven. Each player with six ember or more is reduced to five. So you can use this to take away their huge stockpile of ember, and then you're rolling. So if they're going for the look how much ember I've got, this is a great counter. And that's where Control the Weak comes in. Because you know in a tournament game, you've had a chance to look at your opponent's list before the game starts. If you know they're playing Doorstep to Heaven, you use Control the Weak to force them into any house other than Sanctum next turn. If you know they're playing too much to protect, you guarantee they can't pick Shadows next turn. But what if you don't have Control the Weak? And what if you don't have Key Charge? Then there is a situation where you go and get like 50 Ember, you end the turn with your entire deck in your hand, and 50 Ember ready to forge three keys in a row and win, and your opponent just drops too much to protect and then you lose all your Ember.
And the key point I'm making here is, it's not just library access and the pent seed, it's about whatever else you've got. Now as a side note, I think I've made this pretty clear, but let's say it explicitly, if you don't have phase shift, this combo is infinitely weaker, because you've got to rely on cycling using only logos cards, and that is significantly more difficult to do. With one or two phase shift, there's a very good chance you will just keep being able to run through your deck. And that's the other thing we need to mention here. What's often going to happen is you're going to end your turn without having won the game. But if you've played a control the week, you've said what your opponent's active house has to be next turn. They're not going to do very much. And you can just do the combo again next turn because you're going to end the turn with library access in hand. And such a small deck that you don't need in the pimp seed, you can just keep cycling, drawing the one every time you play a card because you'll have like 15, 20 cards in hand. So if you're playing it with stuff like Key Charge, you can win the game before your opponent does anything else. If you're playing it with stuff like Twin Bolt Emission and Control the Weak, you can clear your opponent's board while also guaranteeing that they don't have what they need next turn in order to be able to stop you. There are plenty of hard counters to this, but any hard counter that comes in after your opponent has started, your opponent could potentially stop you doing with something like Control the Weak. But the other thing to remember here is, there's plenty of artifact hate. Something simple like Snecklifter here would absolutely wreck this combo. When you play it, take control of an enemy artifact. While under your control, if it does not belong to one of your free houses, it is considered to be of the House Shadows. Cool. Because Nepenthe Seed, like every artifact, goes down exhausted. You've got to wait a turn to use it. And when it's used, it gets sacrificed. So your opponent plays down a Nepenthe Seed. Next turn, you play Snecklifter. Use Nepenthe Seed. And then it gets sacrificed. And your opponent doesn't get to use it next turn to rock with their combo. So any card that's taken away or using your opponent's artifacts, because when using Nepenthe Seed, it gets sacrificed, is going to work. Something like Barehanded would work, but it just puts the artifact on top of their deck. That is delaying them using it, but sooner or later you're not going to be able to play barehanded and they're just going to start rolling with it and that's going to be a little bit sad. Is it a problem then? That was a question I posed at the beginning of this video. I don't think library access is a problem. And I don't think library access and the pimp seed is always a problem. I think one of the things that was really clear in the final we watched from Illinois, is that Dan's deck didn't have the answers for George's deck. I think that a Pemp Seed Library Access Key Charge Phase Shift combo can be awkward because you've got to have a lot to get it rolling. And I think this control variant can fail. But the fact of the matter is that when this works, it locks your opponent out the game and you basically win straight away. And look, it might take 15, 20 minutes of the turn to end and your opponent to concede, but you, you win when the combo starts, essentially. Is it a problem? I don't think library access is, and I don't think that library access and the pent seed is. I think library access and the pent seed phase shift might be, but I know that there are some combinations using those cards which very much are a problem, and given that we've had two non-sealed Vault Tours and one has already been won by that deck, I think it's fair to say we've not seen the last of it. But I would very much like to know what you think about this. So let's get a good-natured discussion going on in the comments section. Go nuts! But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Keyforge. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.